Earth podcast with your hosts, Jason Mefford and Kathy Groover, Fire and Earth, giving you the keys to unlock your limitless potential. Welcome to another episode of the Fire and Earth podcast. I'm your co-host, Jason Mefford. And I am Kathy Groover. And hey, Jason, you know, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, that you repeat the same pattern over and over and over again. I don't know if you've noticed that there are times mm. you repeat the same pattern over and over and over again. Like that you repeat it over and over again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the like same you're thing. repeating like yourself right and now? Again. again and again and again? Yep. Yeah, actually yeah. I have. I was going to make some smart ass comment, but I'll just be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I found I, myself repeating over and over and over again. Yeah, I think we all have. And the question is, how do we break out of that? Why are we doing that? What do we really want? Um, I had an experience with a client recently who every time she comes to my office, just once a month, but every time she comes to my office, it's the same story. It's the same dialogue. It's the same frustration with the same guy. It's the same. And she keeps bringing herself into that situation over and over again. And I finally asked her, what, what are you getting out of this? Like, what do you need? What do you want from repeating this pattern over and over again? And I didn't think she was a very deep thinker. So I didn't expect an answer. And as she was walking out the door, she said, I just want attention. Mm -hmm. And even me getting negative attention from this guy is attention. And that's what I get from this. I was like, wow. So starting to have a breakthrough. She was at, but she's still there and she's still there, you know, so she clearly doesn't want to break out of that pattern and I can't make her and I can just encourage and I can guide and I can do, but it's up to her to break that pattern. So I think we've all had experiences where we're stuck in these things and we keep repeating over and over again. We might not even be noticing that we're doing it, but it's happening. Well, and I think it's interesting because it, um, you know, it, it brings up some of the stuff that we talked about before and that we're going to keep talking about, right? Yeah, repeating it again. Uh, and repeating again and again. it again and again, because that's how we learn is through repetition for one thing. Right. But, you know, I, I, I think it's interesting, you know, kind of to your question to begin with, why do we repeat things over and over again? Because we've created habits. And when you create habits, then you get in the habit of doing the same things over and over again. And there's good habits right? I mean, the way you put on your shoes and tie your shoes, my goodness, if we had to think very hard about that every day, that would be pretty crazy. So we've established a habit of how we tie our shoes. Nothing wrong with that habit. But, you know, sometimes those habits can be things that are hurting us, right? Like, like you said, with, with this lady. So why do we do things over and over again? Because we've created a habit. Yeah. And it's fulfilling some sort of need. Um, you know, the way we put on our shoes, the way we put on our shirt, it's hilarious. A friend of mine sent me a funny meme of some celebrity pulling his shirt off um, and then doing some freaky dance. It had to do with what we were talking about. And then my friend adds, and who are these freaks that have to cross their arms to take their shirt off? And I went, how do you take your shirt off? Because that's what I do. I cross my arms. And on now I'm sitting here going, which way, which way do I do? Well, I do it both ways. Sometimes I'll grab the neck and pull it over. And oh, sometimes why would I'll... you do that? Yeah. That just... Because it keeps it inside out. It keeps it the right side out. Right. But if you, if you do the other way, you're inside out, right? But also, can you just grab the sides and pull? No, it doesn't go anywhere. So you <laughs> have to cross your arms. <laughs> so we have an entire coverage because I'm thinking, how else would you? They did a study about which way people face in the shower. Do you face the, with the water on the back of you or do you put your face in it? And they said, I know you, peop, you think the other half are freaks, but it's about like 50-50 of people where they put their face in the shower. We have these things that we think are perfectly normal for us, perfectly acceptable for us. And then you realize somebody else does it differently and you're like, wait, what? How would you do that? It's a habit. Those are not hurting us. Whether you put your face to or from the water, however you take your shirt off is not hurting you. Those habits of um, those repetitive thought patterns that are keeping us stuck those repetitive um, thought patterns that are keeping us in relationships that are not good for us, that are dangerous for us. She's getting verbally abused and she's not going anywhere because she likes the attention from this guy. She's getting something from him that is keeping her stuck there or the ego state that wants to leave is not executive at the right time. That's the other thing. Um, yeah. So there's all this mix of things. And, and I went through that you know, with, with my divorce. It was the ego state that really wanted to go was executive when I wasn't around him. And then when I finally got back around him, then that loving, caring, the one that wanted to stay became executive again. So there's that inner conflict. Um, 
And I think we often have that inner conflict. So it's those, those habits and why we do that same thing over and over again. I think there's multiple explanations for it. Well, and and because one of the reasons is, you know, like, I mean, we'll just keep taking that example a little bit, right? I mean, so, so why is she repeating it? Because she's established a habit. Why did she establish a habit? Because there's some need that that habit is filling. Now she, she recognized, like you said, as she walked out the door, well, I need attention. Well, and so, and so needing attention is not necessarily a bad thing, but at a, at a deeper level, and this is where, like you said, you know, with the ego states, when we kind of get into that aspect or to what some people call our identity Mm -hmm. at our identity level, she has built a story and has beliefs that as a woman, she will only get attention from a certain kind of man who is verbally abusing her, could be physically. I mean, we don't know everything, right? But, but you see that a lot where, especially women, but it happens to men too. They get into an abusive relationship and they get out of it and they go and they get back into a similar abusive pattern just with a different person. Because so much of the time we think it's the other person when the whole time it's us. Yeah. What is the common denominator by those five it's guys us. that keep hitting it's you? It's us. Yeah. It's us. And it's and it's not necessarily that you're you're doing anything to deserve it, but at the at that identity level, yeah. that's what you've programmed yourself to believe or 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 the only way you believe you can receive that. And so until you actually work on that identity level and say, you know what, honey. There's a lot of men out there that will give you attention in the right way without verbally or physically abusing you. You can be loved by someone who loves you in the right way and does give you that attention. Yeah. And I mean, it's like the little kid in the, there there was always that kid in school that acted out, whether he was the class clown or whether he was the troublemaker or whether he was looking for attention. And that was his tool for getting it. That was the ego state that came out when he needed attention. Um, so yeah, we, we tap into that thing and everything we do fills a need somehow. It might not be a need we like. (laughs) I mean, there are a lot of young girls who think if they are not having sex with a guy, they are not worth anything. They think they are only, the only way they will ever get love or what their version of love is, is through their bodies. They don't understand that somebody could respect them emotionally, spiritually. And then the physicality is something you add on top of that as sort of the the bonus prize to that, you know? So I guess the question is then, how do we recognize that we're doing this? Because when we're in it, we can't, you know, we don't see the schmutz on our own face because we're not looking at ourselves. So do we go to a friend? Do we go to counseling? Do we ask people around us? You know, when you feel stuck or you feel you're repeating things, do you seek out help from other people or do you sit down and just sort of go inside? Well, I think it's, uh, (laughs) for me personally, I probably try to go inside first because that's, that's my personality but here's the reality is i haven't made much progress that way you make a lot more progress by at least getting a perspective from someone on the outside and so you know again if you go back and think about we can use a metaphor of a of an athlete you know whether you're you're playing golf and you can't figure out why am i slicing it you know this way what am i doing well you can't stand there and look at your body and see the physical movements that you are doing while you're actually doing that act. And so that's why you have a coach or a teacher or somebody who's standing there looking at you and saying, Oh, you're, you you know, you're moving your hip too quick or you're, you're not, you know, standing square. And again, it can be what, whatever it is, shooting basketballs, doing whatever that outside observer can you know, with, with questions and, and with, with kind of explaining what's happening, that is usually a much quicker way to figuring out what you can do different than just trying to work on it by yourself. Yeah. And that's, that's such a great point because sometimes we don't know what our bodies are doing. This is why I love dance because you look at the choreographer, you look in the mirror, you can see if you're doing it right. There's that immediate feedback loop of, Mm -hmm. it doesn't look the same as what he just did. This is my (laughs) challenge with the trapeze. Because you go do something and you think, oh, yeah, of course my body's at, you know, 11 o'clock. And then you watch the video and it's like here and you're like, oh, that's not even close. You don't realize until you take that step back outside of yourself and look. And I think it's harder with 
emotions with those types of patterns because one, we're not trained to look at those things. You know, we don't, there is no, you know, life program in school. There's soccer and there's tennis and there's gymnastics where you have a coach who in your life is the one to ask you questions. And this is what I love about working with my clients because I will call them on their bullshit and I will ask them questions about well, why do you keep doing that? Like, what mm -hmm. do you actually want? What do you want? And I've had so many conversations with even just friends where I ask the question, you know, what do you want? Because if we don't know what we want, then we're not going to, you know, you don't just turn on ways and go. You have to program a destination in. Um, so what do you want? So I think seeking out someone to talk to, whether it's a friend, um, whether it's a, a counselor, a coach, whatever that is, to tap into that. Um, I asked the guy I'm dating last night, I said, describe me. And he said, what? And I said, so if a friend of yours says, what's Kathy like? What do you say? How do you describe me? And he went through this list of adjectives that describe me. And it was fascinating because I wanted to see his perspective of what I'm like in a relationship with him. Mm. Because I think I know how I'm in a relationship with him, but I didn't know how he actually saw me. And so it was a fascinating question. It was, and he kind of came, pretty much came up with the answers that I would have expected. Um, but I love asking questions like that. And that can be scary. <laughs> well, because it, it does take the courage. And I think that's, that's where, you know, with us, it does take courage to ask for help. And, and I've noticed that again in my life, I, I'm a very stubborn person in some ways, and I think I'm pretty self-reliant. And so I would prefer to just do it by myself. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of times, honestly, where you're in the ring, you're the one fighting, you're the one that has to do the work, but outside of the ring, that's where we can get the help from friends, from yeah. coaches, from therapists, from other people to be able to provide that outside perspective that we usually can't see. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, if it's gotten to the point or when you realize, you know what, I really do need help, then please ask for help. Yeah. Right. But on the flip side too, because as, as we were talking, I want to make sure too, that, you know, if it's you that needs the help, then have the courage to ask for help. If you see that someone that you know or love needs help, yeah. unfortunately, you have to wait until they want the help. Mm -hmm. So you have to be there and be supportive, but you know, you can't just start throwing out this unsolicited feedback to people because that that'll just alienate your relationship. They have to be ready for the change. Yeah. And sometimes they have to hit a rock bottom. Right. You know, but it but it's like, you know, your client that we were talking about at the beginning, there's finally something is happening. At least she had that first inkling of, hold it, I'm, I guess I'm doing this because I need attention. She, she's not going to change until she's ready to change right. and ready to ask for the help. So don't get frustrated if you're like, oh, 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 Kathy, if you just do this, it's like back off, right? Until, until you want it, oh. don't give and it. And that is so hard because I know both you and I are problem solvers. So if people around us have a problem and we can so clearly see it, like, oh, just do what I tell you to, you know, which doesn't work in relationships or professional <laughs> or, you know, and it's, it's funny. Uh, I have a friend who was just having some career issues and, and he wanted to talk about it. And I said, okay. I said, what hat do you want me to wear right now? I said, do you want me to be um, just supportive friend? Do you want me to be your girlfriend at this point? Do you want me to put on my coaching hat and actually ask you questions? Do you want to just bitch about this stuff? Do you want me to help you problem solve? Do you want me to help you brainstorm? Like, what do you want from me? And I had to know that because I can so easily, so easily flip into coaching hat slash problem solving hat where I could have helped him fix all these issues. And he said, well, I think I kind of just want to bitch a little bit. And if you could ask me some questions, that would be great, but I don't want you to solve this problem for me. And I went, great. We, we've laid the ground rules. We know what the, what the contract is going into this conversation. So I think it's important to ask that question because I've had friends who they just want to bitch for a half an hour or they want help or, you know, what do you, what do you want from me at this point? And I think that's an awesome question to ask because if you don't know, you're going to either not do it wrong, but you're going to either hurt somebody's feelings or step on somebody's toes, or they're going to get frustrated and feel like they're not heard. Um, it's also okay to ask how you should react in a certain situation. Hey, so when you get frustrated and sad like this, 
what do you need from me? Do you want me to comfort you? Do you want me to leave you alone? Do you want me to hold you? Do you want to cry with me? Do you want me to throw in a movie? Do you want me to win some crayons? Like, what do you need from me? I think these are important questions to ask that we so often don't, especially yeah. in intimate relationships. Um, how often has our partner had their first emotional meltdown in the relationship and you kind of go, <laughs> shit, what am I supposed uh, to do? <laughs> because I know what I would want for me. Yeah, but, but it's not necessarily what, the same. Yeah, you know, after my ex-husband's mom passed, I said, do you want me to come over? And he said, no, I just want to sit here by myself. Totally valid choice. See, when my dad died, I didn't want to sit there by myself. I needed to be surrounded by, I needed someone at my house. You know, so it's like you, just because that's what you want isn't necessarily what those people want. I think it's important to know. I think it's important to ask, what can I do to help you through this? Well, and the more open we are about that, because, you know, I'm a stereotypical guy, right? I mean, as far as, you know, when, when my wife might, you know, say something again, I want to jump into this problem solver kind of mode. And again, you know, it's like, especially, you know, in a male female relationship, usually women just want to be heard. They don't want it to be fixed. And so, you know, again, it's something that I'm still working with and trying to, to, to get better at, um, you know, because a lot of times I want to kind of jump in and fix it or move into the coaching mode or whatever. And it's like, right. nope, that's not, I'm just supposed to sit here and go, mm -hmm. I understand that must yeah. be hard, you know, kind of thing. And, and then kind of move on. So, and I found the same thing, right? That the more open we can be about what is it that you need from me or that you want from me in this moment um, makes it easier. Because again, like you said, sometimes people just need to be left alone for a little while. Yeah. And if we don't know that, then maybe we're thinking, well, I'm ignoring them and they're probably hating on me for doing that. But that may be exactly what they want you to do, right. you know, versus being around you and hugging and, you know, whatever yeah. uh, the and, situation is. And I think it's also important to honor what that person says. Because the, 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 what I wanted to do was rush over there and comfort him and be there. And he didn't need that. That was for me. That was my agenda. That had nothing to do with what that other person wanted. So if they say, I really just want to sit in a dark room and cry, you can't knock every five minutes. You okay? You still okay? Do you need me yet? <laughs> no, I haven't gotten all my tears out. Know, Leave me alone. It's, you know, you have to honor what that person says. And if they're being passive aggressive and they're like, no, no, I just... I just want to be alone in hopes that you'll keep pursuing. That's on them. That's not on you. Um, you know, mm -hmm. you have to take the person at their word unless you find out otherwise. So, yeah. And once again, we're just going to blown through. Blew through. Right. So, okay. So, so just a little recap, right? Because we started talking about repeating the same stuff, right? Yeah. And so, again, it's if you're repeating the same stuff, it's probably because you've developed a habit. The habit was, was pro is serving you in some way. Feeling some need. Feeling some need. And so, you know, until you're ready to kind of move on and do something else, but you also have to kind of think about this at a deeper level from an identity standpoint and, and think about, you know, if you're going to change that, you have to change some of your identity yeah. before you're ever going to get out of that loop, right? Absolutely. And one of the biggest ways to help you is, again, when you realize that you need help, ask yeah. right do that where you're actually asking and saying hey kathy i'm having a bad day i just need to vent for the first five minutes and then you know can you ask me a few questions to help me figure out because i need to make a decision yeah. right let's say and so you know but being open and honest with people about that and having the courage to ask for help that's when you can actually start to see how to get yourself out of some of those habits that you've developed that you no longer want to have. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it is a teamwork. We have to be surrounded by a team. No man is an island, which as a kid, I never understood what that meant. But now as an adult, I get it. It's like we can't solve every problem ourselves as much as we think we can. This is why we have counselors and coaches and clergy and friends and spouses and partners. And we, people, are, people want to help us. People want to yep. help us. So ask for yep. help if you need it. Yeah. Cool. Oh, this was good. Lovely. Excellent. All right. Well, I'm Kathy Groover. I can be reached at kathygroover.com. And I'm Jason Mefford. I can be reached at jasonmefford.com. So go out, have a great rest of your week, and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Fire and Earth Podcast. See ya. Bye.